you told me a little bit about how this came into fruition. Do you want to elaborate on that at all? So um, Lisa and I thought about starting aside for parenting um, for the parents of teens and college students when we ourselves had our youngest kids in high school and our older three boys had gone to college. So she has three boys. I have a son and daughter. We met when our youngest were in third grade and they've now been out of college for three years. So Lisa and I have been friends for a long time. We realized that there were very few, if any, sites, both in print and digital media, writing about parenting this age group on a consistent basis. It's as if media says, listen, you've gone to age 12, you're good to go. And we know that nothing can be further from the truth. You know, the parenting issues are much greater around what happens when your kid, uh, you know, decides they want to step away from a sport that they've loved and that they think they might want to play in college as a junior versus do they want to give up violin in the fourth grade? Um, you know, the expenses are greater. I mean, the expense of a car and technology versus a little tyke's, you know, trampoline, you know, a little tyke's trike. So um, it's both the cost and the consequences of parenting made us realize that we thought this was really an important age group and nobody was really talking to the parents. So we jumped in. Um, what do you find that pe parents have the most questions for you about or get worked up the most about? There's a lot, but I tried to boil it down and give you three examples. Great. So first, the teen years are years when children are supposed to push back from their parents. You know, it's the way they become their own person. And that's just that's just how it has, how it needs to be. It's important that this happen, that, you know, parents and children separate, but it doesn't make it any easier to go through this when you get this mm -hmm. like closed door, get out of my life, leave me alone, you know, enough. Um, it's really painful and it gets worse before it gets better. The closer teens leave to leaving home, whether they're in college, going into the military, starting a job, that's when they, and this, you may have heard this term of soiling the nest. Mm -hmm. um, because it's easier for uh, a teenager to leave home if it's unpleasant. If it's really warm and loving, it's pain. It's more painful for them. So this is just a thing, and they're really good at swelling the nest. Um, the next thing is that parents are. I think this is pretty universal. We're all trying to determine how much to lean in in parenting our kids and how much to back off. And, you know, we've been, we've been uh, kind of burned by the concept of helicoptering, which we sort of were not big fans of that term. But it makes us, I think, um, because we're so worried that, about being too intrusive in our children's lives that sometimes we can uh, be more hands off at the time, at the very time we need to really help them. I mean, college admissions is a great example. It's such a complex, uh, overwhelming process that for parents to sort of leave it to their kids to do kind of throws them into the deep end. So how to help teens apply to college and how they're going to pay for it are also mm -hmm. big questions we hear about from the greatest number of people. It's because, you know, what we're just talking about the application process can be so daunting and it is the most expensive purchase a, a family is going to make outside of buying a home. Sure. So parents have anxiety around this topic for really good reasons. <laughs> Great segue. College admissions, grant and flood program. What is this? Tell us all about it. Um, you know, from personal experience with our five children and our two families, we know how many questions we had about college admissions. And, and sometimes the questions you have are not transferable from child one to child two. Our son wanted to play football in college. That was not relevant for our daughter, for instance. So all those things that we learned about division three football didn't matter when Annie started looking at schools. We also know that it can sometimes be challenging to find answers that are uh, to questions that are both re reliable and current. And this is even more important now that COVID has disrupted the admissions process in so many ways. You know, things in admissions always, always change from year to year. College board is always tinkering with the SAT. Is there going to be, you know, an essay? No essay this year. What about subject tests? Nope, subject tests are gone. So that's always happening. But um, these changes have been both seismic this year because of COVID and families need to know that the situation for 2021 and not in past years. So we have weekly live sessions and parents get to log on. We use a Facebook live format for that. Parents can log on and ask questions about admissions, merit aid, financial aid, FAFSA, uh, you know, interviews, um, designated interest, uh, self-assessment, essays, you know, 
dozens of topics that are relevant to the admissions process, they can log on and ask a question about their specific kid and get an answer that is that they can really trust because these are people who are in the business and who, um, you know, that's what they do. Talk about what's a common misconception that you're seeing that people have about the college admissions process? Well, a, um, sorry, a temptation for many of us is to tell our teens what college was like when we went through, what college admissions <laughs> was like, you know, and, and suggest that it oh, should be the funny. same for them, you know, right. that we didn't do all the test prep or visit sure. and apply to a dozen colleges. We didn't spend hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on essay coaches. But it's also easy to let the topics college admissions slip into lives early even when your child is just going to high school. And really once it enters, it never leaves. It's like a cloud that seeps under a, a door into your lives because it's, it's and, it, and it can rob freshmen and sophomores of what high school should all be about, which is really just high school. Once, once the kid has decided where they're gonna go and it's time to drop them off, any, any advice there? <laughs> yeah, I have two, two things to tell you. First, or your readers, don't overbuy for your teen's dorm room. That in addition to laptops and maybe prescription meds, there are only about a dozen true essentials we've written on this topic. So any, if you want me to drop links to any of these things I refer to, I'm sure. like that. Yeah. So the rest of the things are really nice to have, but they can be ordered overnight delivery. The one thing you absolutely should do, and if parents haven't done this, who have kids going off to college, so these, these big blue bags, zipper bags that Ikea makes that you can buy on Amazon. They're lightweight, they're durable. They are the very best things to use for packing up all your kids' stuff. Second thing is to spend, parents should really spend some time now in the weeks before drop-off composing a letter, telling their teen how proud they are of them and how much you believe in them. I mean, this is not a letter telling them how to do laundry to separate darks and lights or to make sure they eat a balanced diet. This is something more meaningful about that. Um, you know, that drop-off day only happens once that first drop-off day, freshman year, in, in your child's life. And it's something that they will not forget and you will not forget. Which is, like, what do you kind of do when you're in your work mode? Also, um, so my day-to-day -day is both, you know, thinking about um, content and thinking about community. You know, with the content, we have over 700 writers um, who have written for us through the years. Many of those are parents who just have like one great story that they want to tell, but others are experts. We have um, a college president who writes for actually two college presidents who've written for us. That's we awesome. have people who are, in, who are physicians and people in higher education. We have a ton of English teachers, high school English teachers who are like, excellent. There's not a comma fault at all in their documents that they send us. So we have you know, the content that we uh, care a great deal about, and we have a massive library of, um, of content that we update as, you know, as need, as need be, or as we have another great story that comes in. And we share those across all the social media platforms. Um, we also have our community, which is our Grown and Flown Parents Facebook group. Um, and they, we don't have to start the topics there. It is like a party that never ends. <laughs> you know, people are talking 24 seven. Sure. And they inform us about what's important. So where can we find you on your days off? Well, first of all, I could just answer that with a question like days off. Exactly. Usually <laughs> like I have that in the question, like if you have days off. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I mean, as when you own your own business, it's really, and, and well, it's two things. I think when you own your own business, it's, it's hard to not continually work on it seven days a week. And then also with COVID, we pretty much just blurred the lines between work sure. and life. So, but uh, I, I think you know this, I think I mentioned it, we split our time between St. Simon's Island and New York, Westchester, suburban New York. Yep. I find it much easier to relax and step away from work in St. Simon's, something about this New York, it's in the air up here, you know, okay. this sort of manic work centric life. But I find it much easier um, to step away in St. Simon's. I mean, they're just wonderful places for us to walk the dogs, the great beaches. We always ask our faces this, the best advice you've ever received and from whom? I, I couldn't really come up with a great answer for you, but okay. we, we use this as a tagline all the time. And I think it is, it is just so true that parenting never ends. And uh, if, if she didn't, if she, if my mom didn't say it, she's living it, she's 94. Sure. And I talk to her every day and, um, 
you know, she's, she's not an intrusive parent. She's like a wonderful parent. And um, anyway, but she, she just mentioned, she just said that last night, we were FaceTiming with her and she was like, yeah, well, you know, Mary Dell, parenting never ends. So we say besides faith, family, and friends, three things you couldn't live without. And these can be as, um, you know, material or non as you want, whatever you want. <laughs> we both try and work out most days, you know, it's probably going out for a run for Lisa and I'll try and jump on the bike and do a quick ride just here, a stationary bike. Um, so that's definitely trying to work out is something we can't live without even though we don't always get there every day, but we do, it is important to us. And then we launched Grown and Flown with like it, just coffee, coffee and Grown and Flown are just completely intertwined. Uh, neither one of us could give up coffee. Um, and then I've always had um, chocolate labs. We've, we've now have, I mean, even before we got married, Mel and I had, I, I got a chocolate lab from Texas. The first two or three were from Texas, sort of Texas centric life. Um, and we just got our fourth puppy, Charlie, four months ago. And he is really, really cute. Um, for Lisa, she said a good book, her laptop to work, and a great suitcase to travel are her three That's things. great. Okay, this is Charlie. <laughs> oh, my word. Yeah. Charlie, you are so cute. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I just want to hold him. He's so sweet. He's like super wiggly. <laughs> Thank you for introducing us to Charlie. Um, last best meal. You know, my husband has learned to make low country boil oh, and yum. we love it. And I would have to say that's my last best meal. Head and gym in St. Simons or New York. Well, you know, we love local brew, the little coffee shop near Tibby. Tibby's great too. So that whole stretch is fantastic. Love so that. getting a getting a quick bite at local brew and dipping into Tibby, always fun. Love that. Last vacation. Well, it's hard, sort of hard to remember, um, but we took our kids to Italy. We went to uh, Rome and Florence and it was just the stars aligned and we were able to get everybody on the same schedule and be able to take off at the same time. And it was really wonderful. Love that. Favorite boutique. I struggled with this one. You know, I grew up going to Neiman's and there's a Neiman's in White Plains and it's, <laughs> you wouldn't describe it as a boutique, but it's, it's my go-to. That's your favorite. That's great. Um, what's on your bedside table? I had these two pictures of our kids that are just, they're, they're, they're not posed. And they were when they were they're not when they were younger, but when they were you know preteens and teens. And I, I there's something about their expressions that are, are just I just love. Oh, I love that. And of course my phone. Of course my. Of phone. course, of course. <laughs> um, I didn't even add that. No, I know. Um, your go-to birthday present to give. I love hearing these answers. Um, you know what? I love giving an orchid plant because I think they just last for such a long time and they're so beautiful and simple and they really, they work with anybody, almost any style, any decor. Um, I have one right behind me right there. <laughs> um, that's awesome. A great answer. Um, that's all I have from you. Thank you or for you. Thank you so much for talking sure. to us.